Hi guys and welcome back to Thinker Thema. I'm Amy, the resident thinker all about mechanics and this is my wonderful partner, the woman who lights my bonfire. That sounds weird. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> We're keeping it. My beautiful fiance, Maggie, the themer, the dreamer, the storyteller, all about theme. And together we review games from both perspectives. And today we are very excited to be reviewing Bonfire, the latest Stefan Feld game that many people have been anticipating in 2020. Mm. So in Bonfire, we all play the roles of gnomes who live in the woods and our only source of light and energy is actually these um, bonfires that are lit at the top of towers from nearby cities. Problem is, over the last few months, these bonfires have been dimming down to the point of complete extinction. And so even though we don't like to go out into the cities, we kind of have to venture out and go, well, what, what's going on? So we go out into the cities and we find that the cities are deserted and there's only one guardian of light left who's like, uh, I can't tell you what went down. Um, but here's the tea. Uh, all the rest of the Guardians of Light, who were the ones who created the bonfires, have taken off back into their private sacred uh, islands. They took their bonfires with them. And so if you want to uh, get the bonfires back, you're going to have to get on your boat, go visit their private islands and try and somehow convince them or have a conversation to uh, try and get some of that light. Back. Hunt them down back from their sanctuary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, if you can convince them, then they can, you know, come back to the cities and like keep Bring the, the fires, keep the fires going as well. Yeah. Well, and what are you trying to do in this game? Mechanically, it is super interesting, and I'll talk about the things that I really like about the mechanics. But to begin with, just a broad overview. You all have an individual puzzle that you'll be working on throughout the game. So that is basically the area where you're wanting to light the bonfires um, combined with the guardians that are coming around to, I guess thematically, worship the bonfires actually that help, them come, help to them come to yeah, life keep them going yeah. and you will be building that out with many different puzzle pieces that you'll be collecting um, across the board and at the heart of this game is a series of objectives or tasks as they're called in this game that you are going to want to achieve using of course classic uh, resources and um, action tiles but what's really interesting about this is some of the ways that the mechanics have been implemented. So what you're going to be doing is on your turn, you can take one of three different actions. So really that is quite simple. I have to say that the actions are swift in this game. Um, you, there's very little downtime, which is something that I really appreciate because you can only do one of three things. You can take a tile, from this collection of um, little three piece tiles from your personal stash, either from the top or bottom of the collection mm. to play into this middle puzzle that you have in the center of your player board. Or you can take an action by using an action tile that you've collected along the way that all relate to different parts of the board or you can light a bonfire. So once you've been able to collect one of these objectives using resources to buy it, using action tiles to collect it, it then goes onto your board underneath this kind of chain here, which consists of a path tile at the top, which again is something that you can collect along the way. It consists of a portal. So you are using this central bonfire as one of your actions to collect the right shape to slot into that spot. And then the objective, which you're traveling around those islands that Maggie mentioned in your little boat, which again is an action, to collect these objective tiles. And then once you've achieved that objective, it flips over and it is a bonfire. And what I'm showing you here is the ideal combination where you've got a blue path tile, a portal that allows a guardian to travel along it, to stand here and worship this bonfire, which is actually an objective that you've completed. Mm. So what you are ideally trying to do is build out this whole puzzle so that you've got these completed paths through to lit bonfires to get the most victory points in the game. It also helps if you can match the bonfire color to the path color. So there's a lot to think about in this game. On top of trying to build out your puzzle, you are also collecting gnomes that can help you along the way. So these little specialist cards will give you ongoing abilities throughout the game that are going to help you uh, break the rules and make your puzzle much easier. 
And then you've got public objectives here. So as soon as someone completes that, they get to take a bonus action. And you've got specialist gnomes that you can recruit and take a one-off scoring, kind of end of game scoring, but only one person can do it, the person who gets the card first. Mm. Um, so that's really the crux of the game. And I'll talk a little bit more about that once Maggie tells you about how well integrated the theme is. Okay, uh, let's talk about theme integration. Just to begin with, um, the the board itself and the components i actually really like the graphic design or the illustrations on the main board um and the cards and and some of the components like they're really cute like the you know the ginger, ginger. and i don't know what this algae is meant to be like um yeah the, the blossom and all of that sort of stuff and the cute little um the guardians with their the little hands are awesome. Awesome. Ah! um so like that's that's pretty cool I've been through some dark places, uh, ironically, with this uh, with this theme because, and this is I've done a lot of soul searching and uh, exploring why this could be. I had mismatched expectations in terms of what I thought the theme was from kind of getting a little bit about it and then what the actual play experience is. When I saw a theme that was about, you know, like a world that's gone into darkness and then you have this hope of light and the guardians of light have, you know, moved away, everything's deserted. And the way that you can go and get that light back is with an attitude of, you know, being humble and good intentions, which is like, that's how you bring light back into the world. It's like, it's those little acts of kindness and service that start. I really overthought it. I think I, um, I think I was seeing it from the lens of like this, like, transformational metaphysical like guardians of light being this like enlightenment uh, metaphor that's not this um <laughs> and the the biggest um sign of it for me was as i was reading that introduction and you're going oh great so you're going into you know you're going that there's still hope we can go to with humility to the guards and and seek help the l final line in that description is I can see other gnomes are also after the same thing, but we can do it better. That's the like ultimate not humble <laughs> attitude that you can have. So it's like, wait you a second. You think you can get light back? Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna show you, think, you how to you get You think light you can back. be humble? I'm gonna be humbler than you. Um, it's like, wait a second. There's something that's not congruent from that point. So from that point, I was like, oh, what's, what's going on here? So I almost felt like if I were these, um, and then also the way that you kind of get, get on their favor is by like doing doing things for them. And one of the things, for example, is like, you can get um, one of the tasks is to get three bonfires. So wait, so I'm, I'm coming to you to get bonfires. But one of the things that you want me to do is to start three bonfires. That doesn't, <laughs> it's like, if I can do them by myself, why do I even need you? Um, anyways, what I realized later on, I was like, this, it's missing the point. No, 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 I was missing the point because this is not from the guardian's point of view. This is from the gnome's point of view. Yes, the gnome, you're not looking for enlightenment. This is like, this is like <laughs> ultimate themer gone on a, on a rant. You are looking for the most efficient transactional puzzle um, to get that light. Like you want to get stuff done. You want to get that light back lit so that we can get our job done. So it's not a transformational, transcendental experience or message. This is a race and quite a lot of the elements are a race to like first one who, who to get there um, for yeah efficiency, who can get there, who can actually get the most uh, fires lit and all of that. So from that, that's like my big uh, warning. There's a lot of components that like make sense. Like you are quite literally going on your boat to the islands, fulfilling those tasks and even trying to bring back those guardians to your city so that those towers can have mm -hmm. their bonfires lit. The experience I found it still like as from an immersive point of view, it's more about a puzzle than it is about a, yeah. you know, transcendental I mean, thing. Listening yeah. to you talk about the theme, you had to work pretty hard to get there. Like you've had to I go through do. a process. I, I really did. Yeah, but you're really <laughs> trying hard yeah. and some yeah. games make that effortless. And yes. this is not one yeah. of them. No, I had to yeah. kind of go looking and digging. When realistically, this is um, often, um, his games have been defined or, or, or described as a battle of wits. And it is yeah. very much like you're all Absolutely. around the table, battle of wits, trying to figure yeah. out who can out strategize or be more efficient than and the And I don't person. think he's particularly well known for his, the artwork yeah, yeah. and like or, kind of theme of I really games. like the artwork though. Like it's, yeah. it's oh, nice. Yeah. This, yeah, is yeah. A, that's, yeah. this is a huge, I believe, like quite a mm -hmm. step up from some previous games. Yeah. Um, but if... 
I may. Of course. I yeah, would love to talk about the mechanics. And I think this is where this flourishes. Because I am thrilled with this game. Mm. I just put that out there straight away. There is, if you are someone who appreciates mechanics and the integration of those mechanics and a little bit of competitiveness, I think this is a real winner. And I'll tell you why. Um, there are probably a few key things that I love about this game. One thing that I didn't mention earlier is the fact that uh, when you take these tiles and you place them into your little uh, puzzle in the center, you get to take one of each of these types of action tiles, which obviously are going to help you get things done. But they also connect to each other. So if I was to put this tile here, I would get two red, a brown and a purple action, which relate to different things on the board. But there is one... Well, there's two interesting things about this. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> there's a lot one, mechanically going on. There is, spoken. there is. One, every time you take one of these action tiles away from your collection here, you are costing yourself three victory points because at the end of the game, if you can maintain these, they award you three victory points at the end of the game, mm. encouraging you to better optimize your puzzle. The second thing is that there's a sneaky little rule that is kind of just like a little sideline rule, which is you can swap any two of your action tiles, no matter what they are, for the one that you want. So you can use two to, as a wild to replace any one. You can use two resources in the same way to activate, to act as any other resource. And why that makes this puzzle really interesting is because if you can create this cascading effect of putting like action tiles connected to each other, there's, a, there's an element of getting the right tiles that you need, but also an element of getting the volume that you can then swap those tiles for mm. what you need. And I think that is really clever. Okay, second thing, <laughs> second mechanic I love about this game is when you're building out and trying to create these paths through to your bonfire, you need a couple of different puzzle pieces. You need these colored puzzle pieces, which obviously you're trying to color match with the bonfires that you're going to be lighting. Mm. Um, but the interesting thing is when you take one of these, you need to build from left to right. So you can't just build over here. You are building out this puzzle from left to right. However, the other piece of that path is the portal that allows your guardians to actually move through to the bonfire. They're being collected in this wheel here. And when you're turning this, this central bonfire and collecting one of these puzzle pieces, I'm just looking at the next one in my the triangle, the, yeah. this one here, you are building from, actually that's not a legal no. move that I used to demonstrate, no. you're moving from right to left. So you've got one piece of the puzzle building from left to right, one piece of the puzzle building from right to left, and actually you need both of those to come together before you can move your guardians in. Brilliant, brilliant, <laughs> because you can't ignore one of those things. You need to be working on both of them to bring them together, and that mm. is exceptionally clever. Number three thing that I love about this game mechanically is the public objective. I've spoken about this before. I love a public objective because it gives me purpose. It gives me a race. It makes it tightly competitive. And in this game, there are five that never change. But once you reach those conditions, which are quite difficult, you get to take this kind of neutral colored meeple, gnome, no, 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 apprentice, I apprentice, think something, yes. uh, worker, and you get to take a bonus action that can really help you amplify your game. Um, any bonus action is really useful mm. in this game. But I also love these other public objectives mm. in the form of cards that only one person can meet. So in this one, anyone can meet it. The first person gets a bonus action. In this set, it's like saying, well, here's something that is going to reward you, you know, a lot of victory points, but only if you're the first person to cash it in and take mm -hmm. it. And you have to take the victory points immediately, which means you're constantly evaluating, <laughs> oh, is the other person going to take that card before I get a chance mm -hmm. to score it? Or do I hold out and try to build up that, that engine more mm -hmm. so that when I do score it, I get more points? Amazing. I love that <laughs> so, so much. Um, another thing that I love about this game, those are some of the main things about... I really appreciate about the puzzle is that there are a lot of these different um, objectives that turn into bonfires. There are three different levels. So blue is the easiest, then there's pink, and then there's um, yellow, which are the hardest, which re reward you with more victory points mm -hmm. once you've lit that fire on your player board. Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting is that there's so many of these that are provided with the game that... Um, when the game is set up, I find myself staring 
at this part of the puzzle so much to find not only an efficient path for my boat to go around and collect different objectives that I'm then going to focus on for my game, but looking for the synergies in those different objectives in terms of what I want to focus on this game. So if I want to go off and try and collect all of the guardians, then I might be looking for objectives that relate to guardians. Um, If I want to optimize my puzzle here, then I'm looking for puzzle optimization Mm. pieces. So there's a lot to think about and I just love the way it comes together. And it and the end game is completely driven by the players. So the, the game ends when everyone's kind of lit a certain number of bonfires and are taking free mm-hmm. actions or achieve these public objectives. And so the game could be really slow, but then ramp up really quickly mm-hmm. as everyone starts to achieve those objectives. We've yeah. only played this at two. I can't wait to get to the table yeah. with more. I'm played, really excited. I'll talk about solo as well. So I've played it solo a few times. Um, and the way the solo works is you've got a, a Tom, the Automa uh, deck. And yeah, essentially you're just taking turns. Whenever there's a, a Tom turn, uh, there's usually an element that is advancing the game. So yeah, it's a fairly straightforward thing. You're just trying to beat Tom. So Tom is going to be scoring. It's going to be achieving the same type of things that you are and it's going to have a score at the end and you're trying to beat that score. You can have a variation of a uh, handicap. So you can actually start with um, like fewer points or more points at the beginning. So it's just kind of making it harder or easier. Um, but that's that's essentially it. The actual gameplay experience is it's quite Uh, I'm going to say overall similar in the sense that you're still trying to look at that optimization of the puzzle, that main puzzle, and it's that speed thing. It still feels um, just like we did, we talked about with Honey Buzz. Uh, Tom is a lot more efficient than other players. So like it's faster, like it felt like it was faster. It also felt like Tom is very good at achieving a lot of stuff. So I actually found that... I I thought I wasn't bad either. Well, she won every time. I actually (laughs) beat beat Tom once. (laughs) Then Then he's not more efficient than me. (laughs) Well, like he managed to get like all the bonfires. (laughs) So so it it works. Yeah, it works well um, as a solo. Again, from a thematic immersiveness point of view, I wouldn't say this, like I enjoy the elements of it. It's not a thematically immersive experience for me. Uh, It's more of a mental puzzle and strategy and trying to figure that out. And for me, I absolutely endorse this game if you're into mechanics. It is just a fun, interesting puzzle. It's it's quite complicated. Um, I would caveat with the fact that it's probably not going to be an easy game to teach. Um, it mm. might take a little while for people to get into it. I actually think it would be easier to learn from someone else rather than to read the rule book. There's mm. a lot of iconography that you need to get your head around, um, not to mention the many different building blocks that um, form this puzzle um, in front of you. So yeah. it is a bit of a steep learning curve, but well worth the investment because I just I find it really fun to play this, actually. Yeah. I find it is not particularly like, aggressively competitive mm. but the ra- all of the different race elements make it kind of just a lean in efficiency puzzle greatness <laughs> like i really really do enjoy this game it will a hundred percent be staying in our collection and if you can appreciate brilliant mechanics maybe not <laughs> the theme as much but i actually just like for me it's enough theme it. yeah it's enough theme to make me feel like i'm slightly doing what they're yeah. talking about yeah. um but i yeah i just really enjoy this game and actually embarrassingly stefan feld games are kind of a missing piece of the puzzle in terms of our collection mm, yeah. um like I recently have backed the full city collection. I'm really excited to see the re-implementation of like Bruges and um, Macau, um, for example. Um, really excited to get my hands on those. But aside from a long time ago, Castles of Burgundy, there's like not really been a lot of Stefan no, Feld in our yeah. lives. So, you know, for example, mm. you know, Bora Bora, uh, Notch Jam, like, like all of these well-known games mm. um, really haven't hit our table. And so... I'm keen to get more. This is yeah. like really wet my appetite for more <laughs> Steffenfeld. And I would love if you could tell us in the comments, like what is your favorite Steffenfeld mm, game and yeah. why? Which one should we buy next? Because I just like, I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole and find all of the games and buy all of them. Bye but, bye savings. But yeah, this is just um, beautiful. It's beautiful in terms of game design and um, yeah, really excited to play more of it. So that's our review of... Bonfire by Stefan Feld. If you liked this review, 
please hit like, please chat to us in the comments, mm. hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. We're trying to do as many videos as we can pre-Christmas. Yeah. It's starting to get busy, but man, there's still so many games that we want to get to our table in 2020. Also, if you know of any uh, enlightenment, transcendental experience type games, let me know because I'm very keen to find out. Obviously, I over-invested in uh, that you as really a thing. I'm song. just a girl in st standing in front of a board game community of brilliant designers asking for a transcendental game. Is that too much? to ask? I don't know. <laughs> we'll keep looking. <laughs> In the meantime, I'll enjoy discovering clever mechanics. Definitely. <laughs> but anyway, that's all from us. Bye for now. Bye.